we just packed up and uh, we're now back on the road on our way to Monkey Maya. Um, we didn't do a lot of filming around the, the caravan site. I mean, it was fine for what we needed to, but I mean, pretty, pretty basic, but we were really only in sort of late afternoon and had a bit of a look around and some dinner and unwinded down and then it was pretty much bedtime. So we didn't sort of explore a lot of the caravan site, but that wasn't really the intention of, of that location. Um, but as I said, it's beautiful coming in. You've got the Pink Lake, which is which is really worth seeing. So if you are down this way, um, and there there was a, some beach access as well. So if you've got a, a tinny um, and you want to drop that in, or you want to do some fishing, you can actually drive your car onto the beach and, and do that as well. Would you say it looks pinker today, guys? Yeah, yeah way, way, way pinker. It's really interesting, it's isn't it? With the clouds. Yeah. So we're just making our way through Kalbarri National Park at the moment. It's very green, very lush. Quite windy as well, quite nice to drive through with the caravan. Look at this, guys. Part of the trip we took some uh, valuable advice about making sure we sort of map out fuel stops etc on the way uh, so with this particular car the Pajero Sport um, it's only a 68 litre uh, diesel tank which um, isn't massive so we've just got to carefully plan out our trips now I actually brought 30 litres of extra diesel on board just as a uh, redundancy if I, if I do need it but we've actually mapped out fuel stops so pretty much any opportunity along, along the way to fill up we will do and we've just mapped out those stops to make sure um, you know, we can get there. Um, we can probably get about 300 kilometers on a full tank uh, while towing. So we're averaging around the 20 liters per 100 kilometer mark. So um, yeah, just important that you, that you map that out. So two days of driving, and I reckon we've done about, what would you say, at least two, 300 sort of thumbs up and waves the cars coming past us. So we're finding that the majority are doing either the, the one finger up or the half hand which is kind of like that. Um, we've had a few get very excited and waving, waving, waving. So a <laughs> bit of a mixed bag and a couple of grumpy ones that don't do anything. So <laughs> they're no fun. <laughs> no fun, no. Good way to pass the time. Okay, so we're just stopping at Billabong Roadhouse. $2.05 a litre for diesel here at the uh, Billabong Roadhouse. Can't complain with that. So um, yeah, that's a bit of a score. I was expecting to pay kind of sort of more than $2.30, um, you know, uh, fuel's pretty expensive at the moment, so that's a bit of a win. Okay, we're just checking out Shell Beach. We've heard it's uh, worth a visit. So where are we? Here we're on Shell Beach. So it's on the, on the drive to uh, Monkey Maya, so uh, although we're still hooked up, we thought it's worthwhile coming down for a bit of a look with the kids. Um, it's really beautiful. Nice to stretch your legs as well after so much driving. So at Shell Beach, there's basically no sand. Um, I'll just quickly show you. Stretch, aren't we now? 150 k's, guys. Getting close. Yeah, just arrived and a few dolphins having a play in the water, which is amazing. Oh, 
Where are we going, Izzy? Uh, we're going to the dolphin feeding. The dolphin feeding. Ooh, that's cool, isn't it? All right, we better get going. So we're just waiting for the dolphins at the moment. So at 7.45 every morning, they do a dolphin feeding here at um, ROC Monkey Mire. So there's quite a few people down here waiting to, to see them. But um, we've heard it's worthwhile and it's only a short walk from our um, campsite, which is great. So, and what else have you seen this morning, Max? Turtle. Yeah, I've seen some turtles. And, and the, the good thing about the dolphins is they're actually just, they're here all day. So we, we arrived, well, it was about 5 p.m. yesterday and they were actually just cruising up and down the water which is really cool to see um, yeah last night was a bit of a quiet one that's why we didn't do much content we sort of arrived late and sort of got into dinner and uh, had a drink and just sort of winded into the night and up early this morning to, to start the day Best way to start the day camping, bit of a fry up to get us going for the day and exploring. So just outside the beach shack and a bit of a last minute uh, decision that we're going to um, hire some kayaks for a couple of hours and, and explore. Um, the dolphins are out and about as well which um, should be exciting so the kids will love that. Um, and it's about $70 per kayak as well so we've got two of those um, for two and a half hours. It was really nice. Um, they have like a mini playground, so it's kind of fun. Today's been a nice day, just um, relaxing around the resort. So we actually haven't driven anywhere, we've been out of the resort today. Uh, we sort of woke up this morning, had a look at the, the dolphins, didn't we? Yeah. For the feeding, that was nice. So had a bit of a, a lounge around afternoon, didn't we? Yeah. So pretty relaxing and um, caught up with some friends who were also down here just by chance. And um, yeah, just come down for dinner now. Yeah, so. went for a kayak as well and some snorkeling. Yeah, that was yeah, nice. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah, very beautiful. Mainly flat, except for coming back. We're going against the tide. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely earned to wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and we haven't sort of planned anything as well. So we, we obviously know which destination we're going to, but we haven't sort of planned our itinerary around that. We kind of want to keep quite it. Quite nice though. Yeah, we want to keep it flexible, don't we? Yeah. So we have to just sort of explore and do what we want to do. Yeah. yeah, that's quite a good um, camping ground to be honest. We don't normally tend to do campgrounds. We normally do off-grid, but we did want to come to Monkey Mire. Uh, so they've got quite a lot here to offer for families if you do like, um, you know, to come in your van or your tent and, and whatnot. So yeah, we, um, we've really enjoyed it, haven't we? Yeah, it's definitely more than a, than a caravan park. It's, yeah. it's got a lot to offer. You know, multiple pools, a spa, there's... Restaurant, a bar, yeah. um, mini golf playground all sorts of stuff it's, yeah. it's really cool and the beach like literally right on your doorstep the kids want to say something <laughs> there's also a pool that has a really good spa but it dyes your t-shirt <laughs> that is true it's like a ball water um spa for some reason so we all came it out it dyed yours and that's t-shirt everything <laughs> yeah. goes orange it was blue it went all orange but it did dye mine mine was black <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a bore water um, spa, so I, I went in with a light blue uh, sort of skivvy and it came out red, <laughs> but that's okay. You guys are such wallies. <laughs> so we're standing here at the volleyball net, which we found. 
but apparently there's no volleyballs so Mark's created his own game just to oh sorry Max just to um, burn some energy I'm not quite sure who's winning and how we score the points though <laughs> leaving the, um, the caravan site now and we're heading down to Francis Perra National Park so we've heard there's some really good forward driving around there so we're on our way now to Perrin Road uh, which sort of goes from a, a normal track into a dirt track and it's about 20 minutes from um, from the caravan site here so yeah it should be good it should be a good afternoon so we're just turning into the Francis Perrin National Park Corrugations are pretty gnarly on this track. <laughs> Make sure everything's tight before coming down on it. Yeah, so after about 40 kilometers of corrugated driving, you get to a bit of a road, which is pretty awesome. So after the car being shaken around, this is this is nice. But it's quite choppy still, so you have to watch yourself and maintain your speed and make sure you're not going too fast. Just to let you know as well, um, I ran the tire pressures at 14 psi for this trip and it seems to be pretty good so far uh, still pretty choppy and, and corrugated but um, yeah it's it's absorbing most of the of the bumps Ooh, here we go so terrain's just changed now and we're kind of into more of a softer sand still okay just keep momentum it's not a problem but definitely need to be in your four high at the moment Decided to do the longest point of Francis Perrin first to start with, so we're about um, I think 12 kilometres now from Cape Perrin. So we're going to go there and then come back and do some of the side tracks on the way back. So Perrin Point's definitely uh, worth a stop. It was a bit of a corrugated drive down here, pretty bumpy.
but um, when you get to the end, absolutely stunning. So definitely worth um, taking the time to, to come down and I probably you probably need a full day, I would say, um, to, to really explore all the beaches and things down here, but worthwhile, definitely. Checking out Bottle Bay now. We've uh, been to Cape Perrin and Skipjack Point. Where are we, sweetie? We're Francis Perrin in Shark Bay. Francis Perrin Shark Bay, that's correct. Wow, that water is so clear. Just stopped at Bottle Bay within Francis Perrin National Park. Um, the kids are just having a bit of fun in the sand and probably a bit of a paddle and we've just set up the uh, awning on the car so we can just sit out of the sun for, for a little bit and relax and then we'll check out some of the other bays um, over the, the remainder of the afternoon. We haven't really had any issues with um, you know the car or getting stuck or anything. Um, it's very corrugated though so definitely run your tyre pressures low. Um, I think I said before run a, running hours at 14 psi today so it's absorbed most of the bumps as we've gone along the road. Uh, but I have heard of a few people getting bogged. Um, some friends of ours went there yesterday and, and they got bogged. So um, just something to be aware. Make sure you bring your recovery gear, etc. if you come, and some water, etc. Bottle Bay is good for swimming if you want, you know, to stop and have some lunch on the beach. Um, the kids can have a swim in a place. It's definitely the longest beach we've seen out of all the, the spots we've checked up here. Yep. Uh, so definitely put it on your list if you've got kids or if you want to have a swim yourself. Yeah, and, and vehicle access, which is good, so you can just drive your car or your four drive straight onto the beach, which is good. Yeah. the um, the choppiest of all of them to get into very very corrugated uh, but beautiful when you get to the end actually that will be a great one for snorkeling because it's really flat and sort of lots of shells and, and rocks and things so uh, that would probably be my pick that's uh, you know a good one for snorkeling but also there's um, a sandier bit down the bottom uh, you know for kids like small kids to play in and there's no big waves or anything uh, so it's definitely one uh, worth the drive, <laughs> the bumpy drive to check out. Okay, this one is Gregory's. What? <laughs> 
Gregory's. You're saying this one's Gregory's, Max. Hello. This is Gregory. Hello. 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 Okay, final stop for the day is Big Lagoon. It's on a fair bit of driving, haven't we? But, um, it's been worth it. side um, it's more you know they talk about tenting um, but we have seen a lot of camp trailers um, so it's a bit bumpy here we're going in and out um, while we've been driving from uh, place to place uh, in the national park um, but yeah they they don't suggest any uh, caravans from what we can see so just in case you know you weren't sure about that um, we went to Bottle Bay Skip Jack Point Cape Perrin and Herald uh, Bite um, uh, as well as the Big Lagoon. Um, Herald Bite was pretty good. Um, you can actually, like the water's quite shallow there um, and there's a nice um, calm beach as well with no waves. So it's good for little kids if you want to keep an eye on them, but they just want a little bit of a paddle um, and a play. Um, but uh, Skipjack Point is definitely worth um, driving up to. It's just before the um, Cape Perrin because uh, that was a very, very pretty sort of outlook. So Bottle Bay, we um, we pulled up the, the car on the beach and put the awning out um, just to let the kids uh, have a splash and a play. Uh, so it was quite a lot of beach there um, to, you know, just park up and, and chill for a little bit, which was quite nice. Bye, bye. 